Hello, everybody. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Hima Mandali, and I'm here with my friend, Arun Natarajan. We both work in Capital One Technology Department. So uh, we are here to talk about one of the problems we are solving um, by using AR in Capital One. Um, so since I heard that most of you guys have seen commercials, so I won't go through all the numbers here. But just to hit on the couple of important things, we are one of the Fortune 500 companies. And also, uh, one of the metrics that I want to just bring it up here is we do service 65 million customers on a day-to-day -day basis. What that means is we interact from a technology department. We interact with 65 millions of customers on different channels, like the mobile payments, cell phones, or mobile browsers, or call cell. Um, you know, call centers and stuff like that. So what that means is, uh, you know, while we are providing the financial services like the credit card, bank, and, you know, auto loans and all the various financial services stuff, we need to make sure we are always on for our customers, all right? So imagine you're a Capital One customer. You are due for a payment one day, and you wake up Monday morning, you open up your mobile phone, enter your credentials, um, and you want to make a payment by you know, entering your bank details, want to submit a payment. You see a spinning wheel, all right? So nothing happens, you wait, you wait, you wait, right? And it's frustrating for a customer, right? So from a technology company, there is more than just a spinning wheel, right? So we have a complex technology behind it. So like all the big technology companies, we do have all our, you know, the technology built in, you know, on data centers, like we have data centers on premises, which we own it. And also we are planning to migrate a couple of our applications, most of our, you know, the data centers to the cloud. And uh, we are also using Amazon to, you know, host most of our, you know, the software uh, products online and all the things. And with Amazon, we are also making sure uh, we are east, hosting in east, west, and in different regions, different continents and also different environments. So imagine multiple products like the card, bank, and different lines of businesses using different environments, different data points, data centers. The data gets more and more complex, right? So accessing a problem when there is a spinning wheel behind the technology and behind all the tech stack becomes a little bit complicated, right? Now let's go back to the spinning wheel problem where you know, a customer is not able to make a payment, right? And from a technology group, let's say we have a software engineer who wanna solve this problem, all right? Uh, so this is, these are some of the screens that she looks into, right? First, she looks into the particular application and the transactions to see if there is any anomaly that from the logs that we have, if there is any anomaly or not. So she analyzes this pane. And then let's say she didn't identify much things. So she'll go to the next, on to the next other dashboard, she looks into, hey, let's see if there is any performance issue in that particular application. Like, let's say if I can see any you know, application performance spikes to see if I can troubleshoot any issue on why it is slowing us down to make a payment, right? Let's imagine the engineer could not find anything here. She'll want to a different pane to see if she want to see the network endpoints and see if the topology, if there is any uh, you know, discrepancies in the endpoint application network to see, hey, if all the endpoints are working fine or not, right? Uh, well, let's imagine she couldn't find anything here, right? So she looks into some of the logs and all that. She moves on to another visualization where you look into your infrastructure and see how much of processing power we have, how is our infrastructure for that application is looking and all that. So overall, this is one of the problems that we are facing and we are planning to solve. To identify a root cause, we have to look into hundreds sometimes of connected visuals to dig into the root cause. It is slowing us down like an engineer to find the root cause and fix the problem. At the same time, we want to make, we resolve any issues or make always available for our customers. So by using AR, we are planning to roll out a solution, which Arun will talk about that soon. So it's all yours. Thank you, Hima. And as Hima pointed out, um, <coughs> The story is very disjointed in spite of great visuals. And if you walk into our command center, there's like hundreds of screens showing a lot of great information and visuals, but it's not all very easy to correlate. And as 
you just saw, Hema turned over to us. Um, his organization is uh, responsible for uh, creating most of the problems, and uh, our organization is, uh, uh, is, is, <laughs> is going to be solving for most of those. Um, so there are a lot of products that are in the market today that is taking a step on the third dimension and trying to solve for this uh, spatial congestion, if you will. Uh, and they do a good job in organizing things to, to a great extent, but they don't go all the way. What we want to be able to do is our software engineers need to be able to talk to each other and talk to a visualization, a single pane of glass, a glass that can really encapsulate the technology, the entire technology footprint of Capital One. And as easy as this might sound, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of servers that are interconnected and about 1,500 applications that are running on those hundreds of thousands of servers, right? So we want to we wanna get to a place where a software engineer that walks into our command center is able to encapsulate all of that in one view. So what was in the demo is you see one big visualization, a single pane, that shows what's happening to our customers in real time. So this information is also being poured into this visual in real time, and multiple software engineers are able to work with each other as they make changes and as they touch and feel the different components of our data center. Now, Hema pointed out that they're interconnected visuals. There's something like that in the, in the demo, trust me, <laughs> where uh, the software engineer is able to walk closer to the, uh, the, the place where uh, there's an issue, make a hand gesture, and that actually opens up the next layer of complexity within the application layer, and go closer to that and make a hand gesture, and that opens up network topology and then goes on into the infrastructure and as that engineer is making that change in that infrastructure, that gets cascaded back. And in the end, in the end, there are, there are two big use cases that we want to solve for. One is we have a complex network of interconnected systems, and we want to be able to encapsulate and bring that all into one single pane which actually is a living organism type of a deal, where we go make those changes and gestures actually reflect back into our data center. Something that's able to, to react to the, the gesture changes that the software engineer is making. And last but not the least, after the demo, is as the wearables become more user friendly, we want to incorporate them into the lifestyle of our software engineers. And as you can tell, um, he or she could wear a pair of uh, AR glasses and is in the coffee shop and is able to look at you know, Capital One's data center, work in the background, troubleshoot. So it's not just a chore, it's actually fun to work with. Or he's in the, in the golf course and uh, playing the uh, 18th hole and uh, suddenly a call comes and he wants to troubleshoot, he actually lets go of golf and has fun troubleshooting uh, a, a data center issue. So with that, we'll go back to the demo. I'm sorry it didn't work first time. Um, but this is, like I said, what our software engineer is able to, to look around and the canvas is infinite. And that's the biggest advantage of AR in our use case is because the canvas is infinite, you could actually try and put the entire data center's uh, infrastructure components into one view. And the, the engineer, I'm simulating what the engineer is doing as a hand gesture. <laughs> 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 Right? <laughs> and is able to look at the web layer. All right, what's going on in the web layer? Tell me what's going on in the web layer. Right? 
and is able to see, well, traffic is coming from a variety of different locations across the globe, and um, the, end, you know, the end user page loading time uh, is pretty hot. Well, that may not show me what the problem is. All right, go back to the application layer. Let me see what's happening there, right? Um, and there's a red spot that shows me network topology, and from there is able to figure out that this infrastructure, the, the server has a high CPU usage, and that's where the problem is. And the software engineer is able to click it back, make that change, and that gets reflected, and is also being looked at by hundreds of software engineers that are sitting across the globe and watch what he's doing. So that brings us to the end. Thank you very much for listening.